A lifelong Joplin resident with a long history of public service is honored with a ceremonial street naming. I'm Samantha Walker and I'll have that story coming up. Plus, KCU Joplin hosts a mass camp for potential medical leaders of tomorrow and a pair of kid-friendly robots hit the Carthage Public Library for a fun learning experience. The four states most watched news starts now. A crowd of people gathered in Joplin's East Town neighborhood to recognize a lifelong resident and civil servant. This is KOIM News at 6. I'm Dow Quick. KOIM Samantha Walker has more on honoree J.D. Love and why the community is coming out to celebrate him. Mr. J.D. is a man that has given so much to his community. And I don't know a person that doesn't like Mr. J.D. <laughs> J.D. Love is a name that many people recognize around the Joplin community. Love is a lifelong Joplin resident and spent decades as a public servant, from being a police officer to a coroner. He is just a, what you would call a true legacy in Joplin, a true legend in Joplin. The East Town Dream District and the city of Joplin are working together to ensure love service to the city is never forgotten. They have unveiled a ceremonial street name, J.D. Love Way on McKee Avenue, the street where Love grew up. He says this honor is something he never expected to see. Every time, every time I think about this day, I'll be happy for the rest of my life because it's something I never expected, you know. It, but it, it happened in the city that I love. Former co-workers and citizens who remember Love and his service came out to thank him for everything he has done. That's what made him an exceptional, an exceptional officer. So uh, it's his kindness that really stuck out to me. Um, he was a great a role model on how you treated people, um, how you provided that service to the citizens. And while organizers hadn't originally planned to hold the ceremony on Juneteenth, they say there is no better day for it to happen. If it wasn't for Juneteenth, we wouldn't even have this moment. This is a real significant moment in history, and we are just happy to be a part of it, happy to help get it um, orchestrated, and just happy to see it complete, through completion. Those who came to honor Mr. J.D. Love say it was great to give him this recognition when he was still here to receive it. It's, it's a great day for not only J.D. Love, but for our community as a whole. To be able to honor someone while they're still here and they can accept it and receive it is a wonderful thing. And seeing this, Maybe I must have done something right. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Love's signs will be added to the existing signs along McKee Avenue. As a ceremonial naming, residents will not have to change their addresses. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty now for a first look at the weather. Well, of course, another hot one outside for us today. The humidity is a hair lower, but of course, it still feels pretty sticky outside. It's 88 in Nevada, 86 in Monette. Anderson is sitting at 88 degrees, 89 in Grove. Pittsburgh, 88, 90 in Parsons. Nawada is checking in at 90 degrees as well. And our heat indices make it feel a little bit hotter. Low to mid 90s once you get into our western counties. But the winds have calmed down. Of course, they were pretty strong for us yesterday, but they back down. They're going to stay fairly calm as we go through the next few days. Look at all the little cumulus clouds. You can see a couple little isolated little thunderstorms trying to pop up, and there are going to be some hit and miss guys out there as we go through the next uh, few hours, and then the rest of the night looks okay. We'll slide back through the 80s into the 70s. We do have some thunderstorms in the forecast. We're going to talk about that here in just a bit. See you soon. Kansas City University in Joplin showed some high school students what it takes to work in the medical field. The MASH Camp event introduced 9th through 12th graders to different health care career options that include plenty of hands-on learning. Students got to tour the various labs and facilities, everything from the emergency room to ambulances to a mock operating room. We are on day two of our summer MASH camp and so MASH camp is basically just an opportunity for high school students, preferably, uh, to stay engaged with the sciences and healthcare career options and we just kind of like to give them some opportunities to get in the hospital or to get in the facilities, get their hands dirty, see what different departments are like and things that they would potentially be doing. Event organizers hope to encourage high school students into the medical field in rural Missouri where there is a shortage of both physicians and dentists. 
Carthage Public Library had a couple of new visitors. Robots Dash and Dots dropped in on patrons to help teach kids about STEM and STEAM. The pair demonstrated such things as navigating a maze and responding to individual voices. Event organizers hope the two can encourage kids to have fun and continue to learn during the summer break. The Community Foundation of Carthage provided a $4,700 grant to fund robotics programming for the summer. Flag on the field, but in a good way. John Dales has the story of donations headed to the Special Olympics flag football program that's coming up later in sports. But up first, KOIM's Tanya Bach looks at the impact of bird flu on cattle in southeast Kansas. Hi, it's Tommy at Heritage Tractor, here to tell you the difference yourself. There are concerns the H1N1 bird flu could grow into a more pressing problem for people. It's already spread to livestock herds in at least 12 states, including Kansas, and four human cases reported in three states. To combat the spread, Kansas implemented strict movement rules for lactating cows that require both a certificate of veterinarian inspection and a negative milk test. But as KOIM's Tanya Bach shows us, while producers remain vigilant, they're also confident their products are safe. We're cow-calf and I custom graze some stalkers. Uh, I've got some laying hens, sell eggs to neighbors. Um, we got a few goats for the kids and uh, I raise hogs. Wayne Bontrager has been raising livestock at Prairie Oak Farms outside of Parsons, Kansas for nine years, just long enough to remember the 2015 bird flu outbreak. That year, commercial farms in the U.S. destroyed more than 42 million chickens and 7.5 million turkeys due to the highly pathogenic avian influenza H5N1 virus. This butterball turkey farm in Jasper County, just one of many with confirmed cases. You know, there's always that risk. We can't control the birds that migrate through this area. To me, I have never had any issues with it. So I don't have a big concern, but it's something to be aware of. This year, Bontrager says he was surprised when he heard the HPAI virus jump from birds to cattle and he wasn't alone. The fact that it jumped from birds into our cattle or our dairy population specifically did catch us off guard. Justin Smith is the Kansas Animal Health Commissioner. How many positive tests were there in Kansas? So we actually had four herds that were confirmed positive with HPAI. Okay. And were any of those in the, the eastern Kansas region? No, all of our, unfortunately, all of our impacted dairies were all out in the western third of our state. Smith says dairies immediately pulled the infected cows from the milking line and they took measures to ensure none of their milk entered the food supply. It's proven time and time again the United States has one of the most safest uh, food supply systems in the world and, and we rely on that. And so the processes that have been put in place, whether it be meat inspection at our packing facilities or the pasteurization process within our dairy processors has been effective and has been proven effective. Smith says even the infected cows bounced back. And as they started to come back up feed, uh, we've seen those cows recover uh, really very well. Uh, we had very little loss. Little loss, but still a big concern for livestock producers everywhere. I'm someone who wants to support the local people around me or whoever buys my products. I want it to be a healthy product for them that they can you know, understand that we as farmers care about how the public views us. Reporting in Labette County, Kansas, Tanya Bach, KOAM News. Smith says recent studies have shown the pasteurization process does inactivate the virus. And if you're worried about eating beef, well, following proper cooking recommendations will also incapacitate the virus within the meat. Tonight at 10, we're going to find out why one Southeast Kansas dairy farmer decided to change his business after 50 years of milking cows. A little later, the Cardinals look to lock in a winning season. John Dale says that story and more coming up in sports. And the heat is really going to lock in as we go through the next week or so. We're going to be talking about that coming up. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine. Art and entertainment complex. 
home of Connect a Culture and Spiva Center for the Arts. Well, of course, hot and humid outside, but pretty close to where we should be for this time of the year, just a couple notches above that mark, but it looks pretty good. We have a light breeze. We're looking at our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Tower Cam off toward the northeast from the Cornell Entertainment Center, so through downtown. We do have those a few little cumulus clouds out there, but in general, it looks pretty good. Temperatures 90 Chautauqua, 89 in Grove. We have 88 in Carthage. Iola is sitting at 88 degrees. Let's go to 7th and Range Line, sitting at 89 easterly winds, light at about 10 miles per hour, but our humidity a little better today. Dew points sitting into the mid 60s. That puts us into that sticky range, but it's gonna rise as we go into the next seven to 10 days. All right, so heat indices, uh, mainly 90 to about 94 degrees across the region. Through the evening, slide back through the 80s into the 70s for overnight lows tonight. Now we do have some cumulus clouds out there and a few spotty little showers which have been trying to pop up. So we are gonna see a few random hit and miss little showers across the region, but most of you will end up staying dry. Most of the rain's been up toward Kansas City and then out toward central parts of Kansas. We do have some tropical moisture, so you can look at these upper level winds kind of right up, and that's what's given us a few hit and miss storms. Farther south, our first tropical storm of the year down deep into the Gulf of Mexico, which will not make a U.S. landfall. All right, back here at home through the evening, hit and miss storms next couple hours. As we go through the night, pretty quiet. We drop back near 70 for an overnight low. As we go through the daytime hours tomorrow, mid 80s by noon. Once we get into the afternoon, again, there could be a random shower. High temps right around 90 for most of us across the region. Tomorrow night, we slide back, lower 70s again, so a very mild night. And then as we go through the daytime hours on Friday, looking pretty good, a little bit hotter, up to about 92-ish across the region, but we should be on the dry side. Day planner for you Thursday, 73 to start, 86 by noon. High temp, right around 90 as we go into the afternoon. Heat indices are gonna start to climb up a little bit more, so I think tomorrow it's gonna feel like 93 to about 96 degrees, and we'll be in that same range once again as we go into Friday afternoon, about 93 to about 96 degrees. Let's jump into the weekend. Here's our next storm system. Cold front is gonna slide south. It's not gonna have a lot of moisture with it, but I do think we'll get some scattered thunderstorms in here. This is gonna be late Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then they'll be gone. We rebound back into the 90s, but then we really start to heat up next week as we're gonna climb through the mid 90s for afternoon highs. First day of summer tomorrow, high temp at 90, 92 Friday, mid 90s by the weekend. Tomorrow was the first official day of summer, huh? I know, isn't that crazy? Longest yeah. day of the year, daylight wise. So they get shorter after tomorrow. I know, crazy. Yes, thanks Doug. Still ahead, a local charitable foundation makes a donation to Special Olympics of Kansas and a Missouri Southern infielder is named to the Division II Gold Glove Team. John Dale says those stories and more Coming up next. Ashley Stars and Stripes sale is going on now, and everything is Wade's RV. Janelle Smith Carson, who grew up in Fredonia, represented Team USA in the 400 meter dash in the 1964 Olympics. Four years ago, she passed away, but her legacy is being carried on with a foundation in her name. The Janelle Smith Carson Foundation donates $1,500 to Special Olympics of Kansas this afternoon. Janelle's brother, Mead Smith, and husband, Mike Carson, who's the athletic director at St. Mary's Colgan, represent the foundation and present the check. They say it's a great way to continue her legacy. We have three things, uh, cancer, uh, uh, Title IX scholarships for young women uh, and uh, Special Olympics were three of her uh, causes that she felt very uh, passionate about. This money means so much. It enables us to be able to provide um, shirts for the flag football that's coming here for state competitions and also just to be able to support our athletes as they compete. 
Missouri Southern shortstop Henry Kuziak is named to the American Baseball Coaches Association Division II Gold Glove Team. The Lions senior had a fielding percentage of 988 this past season. On 242 chances, he had just three errors to go with 154 assists, 85 putouts, and starting 27 double plays. Kuziak is one of just nine players from across all Division II schools to receive this year's Gold Glove Award. Over to Collegiate Summer Baseball, the Outlaws play the Flying Bison in Abilene again tonight. Last night they lost 7-6 in 10 innings, 7-15 start again. This will be the last time Joplin faces Abilene until next month. I'll give you a score update later tonight. In Major League Baseball, the Royals and Cardinals are both on the road today. KC has the second of three games against Oakland. St. Louis wraps up a three-game series against the Marlins after losing at a walk-off in the 10th inning last night. Matthew Liberatore starts on the mound for the Cardinals. He runs into some early trouble. His first pitch of the day is swung on and crushed to left center, gone for a home run. Next batter is Jesus Sanchez. Same results, another home run. The Marlins go back to back in the bottom of the first. They open up a 2-0 lead. Cardinals get back in it though. Seventh inning, down 3-2. Paul Goldschmidt rips this down the line into left. Mason Wynn comes all the way around from first to score, and we are tied at three. Next inning, bad news for Cardinals fans. Nolan Arenado takes a pitch off the right elbow and goes down hard. He would leave the game after this play. To make things worse, bottom of the ninth, still tied. It's when Otto Lopez comes up to the plate. He hits a line drive into right field. Alec Burleson just can't get a clean handle on it. And the Marlins walk off the Cardinals for the second day in a row. Final score 4-3, Redbirds back at home tomorrow to face the Giants. Royals play the Athletics tonight in Oakland. They're coming off a 7-5 loss. Last night, late start again. First pitch is scheduled for 8-40. A couple of days ago, the Royals and Cardinals both had the second wild card spot. Today, they both hold the third wild card spot. Nice that they have all those extra wild card teams now. Yes, you're right. And they're still in the race, obviously, yes. with an awful lot of season to play. We'll be right back. Area Hearing and Speech Clinic would like to congratulate provider Jonathan McGill, a four state hero. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14 tonight. We're going to hear from a former dairy farmer who says the industry is drying up in the Sunflower State. Plus, the Surgeon General wants social media apps to come with a warning label for children. And we take a look at this year's Juneteenth celebrations from all around our nation. Those stories, a lot more, it's coming up tonight. KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. On your marks, get set, float. Some McDonald County High School students made waves with a boat building competition. They put their cardboard and duct tape watercraft to the test by trying to float across a pool with at least one person on board. The idea of the summer school project is to teach engineering principles, encourage creativity and teamwork, and have some fun. Staying dry, well, yeah, maybe not so much. We're going to hear from an instructor tonight at 10. It's good weather to get outside yeah. and try to stay cool because it's muggy out there. It is, and it's going to get muggier and also hotter as we go through the next several days. 90 tomorrow, 92 on Friday, mid-90s. As we go into the weekend and upper 90s next week. Final sports note. I'll have an update from that Outlaws game in Abilene tonight. Right now the Outlaws are on game 8 of an 11 game road trip. Wow. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here for KOIM News at 10. Let's make it a great evening.